Hey, would you allow an uncertified doctor to perform a surgery on you? Of course not. You rely on their years of medical training and experience. But building a software is not the same. Anyone can become a software developer. You don't even require an engineering degree to become one. All you need is careful preparation and willingness to learn the technical skills. Hi, I'm Ritwik and today we are going to see how doable this transition plan is for you as I walk you through the three stages of this process. Watch this video till the end and find out what you will be doing at each stage and how you can land your first software job. If you like the video, let us know with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our new videos in the coming weeks. It's not a secret that technology has changed everything. How we communicate, how we shop, and even how we travel. Tech has disrupted it all. For example, just look at the food industry. Apps like Swiggy and Zomato have made our life much easier. Or if you want to book a cab or auto, Uber and Ola have got you covered there. Every single domain you can think of is enabled by tech. This is the reason why software engineers are in a huge demand. And if you build your career as a software developer, you can easily cross 40 to 50 lakhs per annum within 10 years. So regardless of your current background, if you think that you want to work in software development for the next 10 to 15 years, switching your job to this field is worth the effort. Now that you have decided to build a career in this field, let's see how you can get there one step at a time. To be honest, this isn't going to be a smooth transition without a proper plan. So let's break your plan down to three stages with clear goals for each stage. In stage one, focus on getting comfortable with basic coding. Then stage two, your end goal would be to get your first software job. And finally, in stage three, strengthen your foundations for a smoother growth in your career. And before we get into the details of each stage, I want to tell you that it is absolutely normal if you feel nervous about making this transition, especially if you aren't confident about your coding skills. Feeling nervous means you have already begun your learning journey. Do you know about the three zones of learning? This is beautifully explained by Udacity in a video. I'm adding the link to the video in the description. You can check it out and come back to this video. You're right now feeling nervous to step foot into the stretch zone. It's part of the process. However, when you get past this zone, you're going to appreciate yourself by staying committed to your goal and achieving new heights in your career. If you agree and are liking the video so far, click on the thumbs up and let's begin with stage one of your transition process. The first stage is all about coding. To become a software developer, coding is the primary requirement. The first question to address here is, do you have the basic understanding of coding? Have you ever written code as part of your school or college curriculum? Or were you ever around a programmer who rubbed off on you and you got excited about coding? If you have answered yes to the above questions, the first step for you is to get comfortable with writing 20 lines of program. But if you haven't done any coding earlier, it's time for you to start learning the basics of programming. There are plenty of resources available online. To make things easier, I have shared some useful resources in the description. You can get started from there. There will be times when you run into the strangest of errors that will drive you nuts. It's not just a beginner's problem. This is going to be a frequent story of your coding life. It's funny when you finally debug it and realize how silly of a problem it was. If you have ever run into something like this, share with us in the comment section. It's always fun to read through these comments. Once you've gotten the hang of coding, it's time to move on to stage two of your transition journey. As I said earlier, your ultimate goal is to get to your first software job. And as we know, to get a job, you need experience. But for experience, you need a job. But the good news is that most software companies focus on the skills you demonstrate rather than your degree or past experience. This is a huge plus in the software industry. Let's see how you can take advantage of this and build a new career in this field. Number one, work on at least three to four projects to improve your development skills. As you work on the projects, you not only get hands-on experience, it's also the best shot to make your resume stand out. When hiring managers see your project experience, they would be convinced that you're serious about this transition. So be sure to pick the right projects that get you shortlisted for the role. You can pick up any project from Cryo's project hub. The link for the hub is in the description. Every project there will add great value to your skill set, and you can complete them by following instructions that come with the project. But if you're still not able to do the projects, a structured curriculum will definitely help you learn the necessary skills for your job. Or if you have someone to mentor you, you can work on the projects by yourself as well. Once your resume is shortlisted, your next goal is to clear the interview rounds. DSA and system design are the two most important concepts that are going to be tested in your interviews, along with tech knowledge required for the job. If you do the projects by yourself, you would easily be able to tackle the tech questions thrown at you. But for DSA and system design, you require a slightly different study plan. We have covered a detailed video on how you can approach your DSA preparation for interviews. 
do watch that and get a clear idea of what you need to do and where to start. You can watch it right after this video. I've added the link to the video in the description. If you've followed everything that I have said till now, there's nothing that can stop you from getting your first software job. However, there's a small catch here. It's not enough just to prepare from the point of view of getting selected for the job. Unless you have a smart strategy to find the job, you're not even going to have the opportunity to put your preparation to the test. Let's look at five strategies you can adopt during your job search. If you even use three out of these five strategies that I'm about to share, I promise that you will definitely increase your chances of getting more interview calls. Number one, try for an internal transfer. Before looking elsewhere, see if you can switch within your own current company. Just talk to your manager and let them know that you're picking up skills to move to a development role. When you have the discussion, make sure that you share the timeline of your transition plan. Say you tell your manager that you want to switch the job in next two quarters. This gives your manager enough time to find your replacement. And without agreeing upon a timeline, they may never prioritize this transition plan for you. Option two, explore freelancing opportunities. You can look for freelance job in places like Upwork, Topcoder and Turing. Freelancing is actually an amazing practice to help you build up your dev profile and dive deeper into the areas that interest you in development. And of course, you would be earning on the side to get hands on with the necessary skills. If everything works out well, it could even turn into a full time role. You can also start by working with someone who is already a freelancer and learn the tricks of the trade before venturing out on your own. Coming to the third strategy, apply to smaller companies. Small companies are more open to evaluating you based on your skills than your degree. If your project experience meets what they're looking for in a candidate, they would definitely consider you for the role. They wouldn't reject you because you're currently working in a different field. It's usually a win-win situation as they can hire you for a salary slightly less than the market salary for a similar experienced person. And you get an amazing opportunity to move into development. When you're about to apply to such companies, Try this small trick. It could work like magic for you. Approach them by saying you can implement something for them by working without compensation for a week just to prove your skills before they hire you. If you're finding these strategies valuable so far, like the video and let us know before we move on to the next two strategies. The fourth thing that you can do is take advantage of your current domain knowledge. For example, if you're from pharma, banking or insurance domain, some companies may find this expertise of you a great addition to their team. They would be willing to give you the opportunity. And at last, the fifth and final strategy that you must adopt is apply to as many companies as you can. This would increase the chances of you getting that first interview call. If you apply for 10 companies, only two or three may call you for an interview, which is absolutely fine. All you need to do is convert them to one or two offers at the end of the day. So leave no stones unturned when it comes to getting your first software job. Given that you will work for at least 15 to 20 years in the software industry, the hustle is worth the jump in terms of your career growth and salary growth. So far, we have seen what you need to do to get started with your transition plan and how you can get your first software job in this new field. However, your journey doesn't end here. Many people ignore the third stage that completes the transition plan and as a result, end up feeling lost and intimidated after they have stepped into their new career. Let's see why. So you join as a front-end developer and in various meetings you attend, you keep hearing words like normalization, docker, blob storage, CI, CD, and you feel completely lost. This is probably because you didn't spend time learning about it during your interview preparation. Not a great situation to be in. Right? You are not going to face this on a daily basis in your new job, but it is always good to continue covering gaps in your computer science fundamentals from the day you start your new job. Some useful areas you could start investing in are databases. You most definitely will need to have sound knowledge about how databases work. A strong foundational understanding of operating systems and networking can go a long way in your software career. Data structures and algorithms. You can easily get lost solving a problem or debugging if you haven't covered a good breadth of TSA concepts. And for Fourth, get a deep understanding of the cloud. Upskilling yourself constantly is very important. Even if you won't be working on the concepts on a day-to-day -day basis, it's going to help you in your career in the long run. So, we have looked at where you can start your transition journey, what to do at every stage of the process, and how to make your mark in the software industry. But some of you may be wondering which role to go after, and that in itself can be quite confusing. If you're watching this video at a point where you have already chosen your role, let us know in the comments below, and do share your thoughts on why you chose the role. Someone watching this video might connect with your perspective and your comment could help them choose their role. How we see this is that there are two major roles to target that would be easy to pick up and would offer you a promising career. Front-end developer roles. This one is slightly easier to crack compared to other roles. It involves you building beautiful static or dynamic websites using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or libraries or frameworks like React and Angular. The other one is Python development roles. This is also a great role to begin with because once you learn Python, 
you can leverage that to do a bunch of different things like building tools, automating workflows, building simple applications. And with a bit of AWS, Azure and GCP exposure, this role can open up several big opportunities as well. So find the role that suits you the best and work on building up the skills you need for that job role. If you found this video useful, do like the video and share it with your friends, letting them know how this transition plan changed your career path. If you're new to the channel and haven't yet subscribed, don't leave without hitting that bell icon for more such career guidance and practical insights for the tech industry.